You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. As some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus: Rune's Path. So we're continuing on from day two. We just spent the night in Rune's room, where nothing, nothing strange happened. I swear, you know, nothing sexy. Just, uh, just two guys. Two cute guys sleeping in the same bed, you know. You know how it goes. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back into it. It's good to be back. Let's start Alarm Chan. There we go. And let's just jump right into it. Ah, <laughs> uh, the first thing I gotta say. Ah. <laughs> ah. I didn't get much sleep either, to be honest. Hey, guys. Damn, I slept like shit. <laughs> Looks like we're not the only ones. <laughs> what, did I miss something? Not much, don't worry. Hello there, morning. How about you, Travis? No, oh, I slept great, thank you. The beds here are great. I was so tired after the ride that even an airstrike wouldn't wake me up. Mm, lucky you. Why, you had problems sleeping? I had a bit too much on my head. A bit, and Rune woke me up early in the morning. How could he wake you up, though? He visited you? No, I stayed in his room last night. I lost the key to mine, remember? Oh, I'm sure you'd find it yesterday. I mean, where could it go? It's not a big guest house, and we're not going anywhere else. I found it, actually, but only this morning. No? Where was it? Miko. Why, I really hope nobody would ask. Oh, this is embarrassing as hell. I had it in my camera bag. Carvin, one day you're going to forget your head somewhere. <laughs> what was that? I didn't hear. Not important. I hope the food will be here. I'm starving. What do you think we'll get? <laughs> oh, I hope they serve croissants. I rarely buy them for myself, but I'm hunting for them every time I'm staying at a hotel. It's almost a tradition for me at this point. Pancaker again would be nice, but I doubt we'll get the same thing two days in a row. My bed is on breakfast cereal. What else would the bowls be here for? The conversation thankfully switches to food, and I'm no longer in the spotlight. Everyone seems to be seems to like talking about the food. After all, that's one thing that connects us all. People from all the backgrounds of every class, every age, and every profession. Students and professors, millionaires and factory workers, best friends and complete strangers. We all have to, and like to, eat. In the meantime, a few of us went for a glass of juice or coffee from the espresso machine standing at one of the tables near the entrance. The cafeteria slowly fills with people, but even though it's already past 7 o'clock, there are still some people from our table missing. And still no sign of Devon. Good morning. Jorgen walks up to our table, and after the terse greeting, sits down next to Bjorn. He looks composed, as always, and still has that cold aura he had for most of yesterday. Everyone goes silent, likely wondering about the same thing. Where's Lake? Jürgen already made himself a cup of coffee at the espresso machine standing at one of the tables near the entrance. Now he takes a small tasting sip, unaware that all our eyes are on him. <laughs> what? Why are you all looking at me like that? How's the coffee? It's coffee. It's always good. Not true. Coffee is not always good. If you say so. Where's Lake? He's still in the room. Of course, he overslept. I tried waking him up, but he just kept bumbling just a minute more. He's taking a shower now. He should be here in a few minutes. You're gonna seem more talkative than he was yesterday, though. Maybe he's warming up to us after all. At that moment, Devin walks into the cafeteria with Professor Arn. Attention, everyone. Sadly, we have to start the day with some bad news. Due to the heavy snowfall, the bus won't be able to come here for us, so we have to skip today's trip to the town. Fortunately, we won't miss all the lectures. The university is working hard right now to set everything up for an online streaming, and we will watch them from here, in the cafeteria. However, only the lectures held in the main lecture hall will be transmitted. That's all for now. Breakfast will be served in a minute. As soon as Devin finishes speaking, the hubbub of students' mixed voices fills the room. The panther makes his way towards our table and sits down next to Rune with a sigh. Morning, Devin. 
Every, is everything fine? Yes, thank you. I hope to have a less eventful morning, but everything's fine. So, we're stuck in the guest house? Unfortunately, only, stu only until the afternoon. The snowplow should get here by then. Morning, all. Did I miss something? Morning, Lake. Quite a lot, actually. Ah, oh, the sleepy headline is finally here. Don't need to remind you that you were late for lunch yesterday. Besides, breakfast isn't even here yet. As if on cue, the guesthouse staff enters with a cart with our food. And yes, they have croissants. Each table gets a basket with various kinds of bread, an assortment of jams and pastes, a pitcher of milk, and a bag of corn cereals. There's also a separate dish with sweet pastries, and one with brunost, as well as regular coconut cheese and a bowl of fruits. Looks like they don't serve fish in this guest house. Not that I mind, I haven't had any in a long time. I'm not a fan of very sweet breakfast, so I skip the cereal and just make myself a few sandwiches and grab a croissant. I skip the coffee, as I already had a cup of matcha and I already can feel it working. I already can feel it working. Rune makes himself a few sandwiches too, and puts a lot of different kinds of fruits on the on his plate. Peach halves, grapes, orange slices, and berries. Mostly blueberries, of course. Somehow I thought he would have more bre have more for breakfast. Eating light today? Mm-hmm. I usually eat bigger breakfasts, but since we're stuck here, I guess I won't need a lot of energy for the day. I'm certainly visiting the pool later. And, as we agreed, you're going with me. I don't remember agreeing to anything. <laughs> Your consent was implicit. Jorgen. <clears throat> oh, hold up. A yawn is coming! Okay. <clears throat> Jorgen, you're not eating anything? A coffee for me is enough. I'll grab an apple or two later. Fruit bat. <laughs> hey, those... Hey, those rhubarber horn are really tasty. I'll take your word for it. I stay away from anything that has rhubarb in it. I wonder if cereal with coffee would taste okay. Hint, it does. Like... What? Don't. As I'm listening to all the conversations happening around me, a warm feeling arises in my chest. It's been only a day since we arrived, but we already look and act like a group of friends. Even if we all study in different departments, just for the duration of the camp, we came to, we can we can, just for the duration of the camp, we can keep together, and it makes me happy. You better not end right here. My God, you better not end right here. Okay. Carvin, I stop eating my rhubarber horn mid bite and look at Miko. Hmm. Did you take any more photos yesterday? No, not really. I mostly shoot onto my digital camera, but I left it in my room and only had the instant one with me. Oh, you have an instant camera? I always wanted to have one. They're so cool. They are. They are, but the cost of film of the film is killing me. Yeah, I bet. Still, I love instant photos ever since I held one in my paw. I once got an album by a local band at the Indie Records la Record Labels Fair. When I got back home and opened the packaging, it turned out that there was an instant photo from the recording session inside. It's a nice touch. As if photos look like small glossy paintings. Or windows to alternate realities, frozen in time. Yeah, I know what he means. I took a photo of Rune this morning, but I gave it to him. Maybe he could show you if he asked nicely. Yeah, maybe not this particular photo. Oh? Why not? Well, it's sort of... I could have more clothes on myself in it. Damn, what were you two doing this morning? No, 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 no. I was just getting dressed. If you say so. Bjorn, you're merciless. <laughs> Only sometimes. I'm all done with breakfast, so I grab my bag and stand up. See you at the lectures. See ya. Later, Carvin. Thankfully, I don't have to hurry. There's still a lot of time before the lectures will start, but it'll be nice to finally sit in my own room for a while. Opening the door to my room after not being able to get in the whole day feels really satisfying. Ah, finally here again. Back in my own room. God, I love the lighting in this. It's so beautiful. I know I've said this before, but RTX on! I look around it, absorbing every small detail, from the, other, from the order of the colors in the carpet to the shape of the ceiling beams and lamps. The air here smells of wood and clean laundry. 
Everything is just as I left it. Most of my stuff is already unpacked, stashed away in the wardrobe and cupboards, so the room looks neat and inviting. After putting down the camera bag on the table, I walk straight towards the bed and let myself fall onto it, surrendering myself to the soft mattresses inside, soft mattresses embrace. The springs creak under me in protest, like a choir of disgruntled gnomes. It feels good to be alone for a moment. Having a huge bed just for myself is pretty neat, too. I lie like this for a while, enjoying the silence. My thoughts roam, for, roam around freely, but inevitably they all circle back to Rune. We spent the night together, in one bed after all. It's not a small thing, at least not for me. For him, I don't know. Most likely it was. <laughs> what a weird thought to have. It's kind of like a fishbone stuck in my throat. Unpleasant and irritating, but I can't get it out. I should change into fresh clothes. I take off my clothes and fold them. Then I hop into the bathroom and generously apply deodorant on my torso and armpits. Afterwards, I take out a fresh pair of boxers and socks, both of the different pattern, just as I like them, and put them on. Oh yes, I feel much better in fresh clothes. I doubt anyone would notice, but somehow it makes a difference for me. Wearing the same t-shirt two days in a row feels wrong, even if it smells fine. I'm glad tigers don't sweat much. I don't have to be too mindful of my smell, unlike the animals of some other species. I have some time to kill now before the lectures. Maybe I'll just read a book, or I can go around and take some photos now that I have my digital camera back. Yeah, that's a good idea. I've been here for a day already, and I barely have any photos. The scenery is stunning, and the guesthouse itself is no worse. Maybe I won't get any great landscape shots in this weather, but I have a few other ideas. I take the instant camera out of the bag and swap it for a digital one. A mirrorless, a mirrorless I got from my parents for my 18th birthday, and has been my favorite tool ever since. Wearing my own jacket with a camera bag on my shoulder, I leave the room to hunt for some shots. Mm -hmm. Oh, this summer, this part is pretty. I stand up and stretch out, groaning lightly. The chairs here definitely weren't designed with watching an hour-long lecture in mind. Uh, that was good, wasn't it? Although, maybe a bit too informative and technical for a morning lecture. Yeah, I think I understood all of it, but it took some serious effort. <laughs> At least the previous one was a bit lighter. The next one is about gravitational lensing, whatever that is. I think I'll skip it. Astrophysics doesn't inter interest me that much. While students are slowly leaving the room for a break, I notice a familiar lion snoring in his chair. His hair is covering his eyes with a messy white curtain, and his snout is half open. Hey, uh, Lay? He doesn't react before I wave in front of his face. Huh? It... Is it over? Yeah, the lecture ended a while ago. Lake rubs his eyes sleepily for a moment, then stands up and looks around. Oh, finally. Wait, aren't you studying astrophysics? What were you doing here? Well, I didn't look very closely at the timetable. I saw a lecture on astrocytes. You know, astrocytes. So I thought, it must be something It must be something astrophysical I'd never heard of before. I had no idea it would be about some brain stuff. So you didn't bother reading the description? <laughs> Who does that anyway, right? Lake. Oh my god, Lake. Well, nothing is lost. I had a good nap, at least. Thanks for waking me up. I'll be going to my room for now. I'll see you later. See ya. Have fun. We have a 40 minute long break now, right? Yeah, although I think I'll skip the next lecture. I should be I should be there. Gravitational lensing is interesting, but complicated as hell. If this lecture won't help me understand it, I don't know what will. I think I'll go back to my room too for now. Sure, see you in a while. See ya. See ya. The room is mostly empty now, but some of the students stay behind, talking in small circles and groups. What should I do? Uh, we're going to go see... What do you mean I can't go fucking see Rune? Motherfu- <laughs> Okay, where do I go? Where do I go? Let's go for a walk with Miko. I'm saving the lake one for lake stay two stuff. I know what Miko is doing. I doubt he was here for this lecture. I don't think neurology interests him. But looking to the far end of the room, that's just who I see. Miko! Hey there! Oh, Carvin! Hello! What are you doing here? I was sure you'd skip this lecture. Your course doesn't have much to do with the neurology. 
I thought I'd try to attend all the lectures today. Not every day I have a chance to learn something interesting from beyond our curriculum. Hmm. Fair, but I don't think I have the willpower to sit through the whole day of lectures voluntarily. Not when there are other fun things to do. Good thing we have a break now, then. We can do something fun together. Actually, I already have something planned for this break. But maybe you would like to accompany me. Sure. Great. We leave the room along with other students, making our way to the corridor. So, did you learn something from the last lecture? Well, not really. The lecture did a good job of explaining everything, but there was so much I didn't know I doubt I'll remember much of it. Not to say I regret being here. By the way, where are we going? Outside. But first, to my room. I need to get a few things. Or you could grab your camera in the meantime if you want. Now that I have my digital camera back, it would be nice to walk around and take some photos of the surroundings. I couldn't go too crazy with the instant camera, especially as I took only one film pack with ten photos with me. I'll go get it. How about we meet at the entrance? Sounds good. Miko enters his room, and I direct my steps to my own. I wonder what he's up to. That sounded a bit mysterious. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh god, that's gorgeous. I've been waiting for the wolf for some time now, but there are still no signs of him. Opening the camera bag, I once again go through the lenses I took with me. 50mm f1.8, f1 medium focal length, a very bright one. Perfect for portraits, but that's not its only use. Third millimeter, f2.8, a wider angle, still rather bright. Not a fan of zoom lenses. They're almost always worse than fixed focal length prime lenses, so I didn't take any to this. So I didn't take any this time. I was surprised how stark the difference is when I first compared them. What are you doing? Looking up, I see Miko sporting a rather full-looking backpack. Just looking through my lenses, thinking if I should rest, swap any for uh, something else. But no, I'm happy with what I have here. And what do you have in there? Uh, I'm sorry. And what do you have in there? You'll see in a short while. Ah. Good lord, Miko. I leave the guest house after Miko, stepping out into the snow. The view of the valley opens before us, still as breathtaking as the first time. It's a fine afternoon, with only the, sl with only the lightest snow still falling. I take a lungful of arctic air. It's sobering and delicious, carrying the smells of pine and pine needled and glaciers. Follow me. We'll find a good spot. Oh, if you want to take some pictures along the way, just tell me. We're not in a hurry. Sure. It doesn't usually take much time, though. I have to stop for just a moment. Catching up with you won't be a problem. Miko turns around and continues down the path leading to the forest. I follow close behind, looking around for a frame that would catch my interest. And either this place is full of great frames, or I'm so excited and happy that everything looks interesting to me. We make our way into the forest, where the trees where the trees muffle the whispering wind. The silence that fills that void feels like a wool, feels like a woolly blanket, almost too heavy to shake off. Miko, what is it we're looking for? The fallen tree or a stump somewhere quiet. We should find some in no time. Right, that shouldn't be too hard to find in a forest. And surely, after a few more minutes of walking, and I notice a fallen tree lying horizontally on the ground, just a few meters away from the path. How about that one? You have a good eye, Carbon. We diverge from the path and head towards the spot I scouted, our paws leaving deep prints in the snow. Perfect. Perfect for what? Let me show you. Miko takes off his backpack and rests it against the fallen tree. He reaches into the bag and takes out a small white box with colorful knobs and buttons. Some kind of instrument? This is something I got not long before the camp. It's a sampler and sequencer in one box. It's fully portable, so I can take it with me anywhere. Oh, I think I saw this out this this one online a few times. Videos of people jamming with these with these are popular. It's fun to use and fun to watch. I like going out and playing in nature. It never fails to calm me down and puts me in a good mood. Staying here, up north, far away from any towns and people, I started feeling more at peace with the world around me. It's quieter in my head, and my thoughts are clearer too, almost as if a veil was lifted from them. The quietness here speaks to me clearer than the city's noise. Veil lifting, the wind speaks to me the tales of the days past. Almost like back home. It doesn't really remind me of that. It's a different kind of quietness. This one feels like an infinite stillness. 
I want to try capturing it somehow, like how you capture the image with your camera. I want to describe this place with music. The sampler has a built-in microphone. I wanted to record the ambient sounds from here and try to make something out of them. Photography and music are very different media, but their aims aren't always far off. They both can weave stories, describe scenes and places, capture emotions. In essence, they both capture or construct worlds. I also wanted to record my own voice humming along with the wind, but since you're here with me, can I record you instead? Uh, sure thing, but you have to tell me exactly what to do. Sure, nothing too hard. <laughs> I'll record the general ambience first, and then maybe try finding some specific sounds I could use. Alright guys, there we go. That has been another episode of Dawn Chorus, Rune's Path. There's a little bit more Miko this time. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. I was trying to see if I could do anything related to Rune, but nope, not yet. The game's, the game's gonna hold off a little bit. But anyway, guys... Oh, yes, I'm yawning. I'm yawning a lot because I just woke up, I drank a lot of coffee, and I don't know. It's the morning. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell for the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!